Hello, hello, and welcome back to episode 12 of my American Truck Simulator career. Following on from our last journey where we ended up in Ratton, continuing on from Ratton, and we're taking this £38,000 of cement to Kerrysbad, a total of 345 miles. For one of the longer journeys, what I'm going to do, but we're no short journey, it's going to net us $12,400. Another journey we're on a where we're going to be driving through the night but we'll jump in the cab and we'll go and get this um, cement the car is bad you have to excuse me if I sound all bunged up again um, I've got a doctor's appointment on Monday got a doctor's appointment on Monday what it is um, a few years ago I was suffering with this condition and I had to go into hospital to have an operation to have some polyps removed from my nose and I have no sense of smell as it is for things what normal people can smell flowers food anything like that I can't I can't smell it really has to be strong pungent smell which does me head in sometimes sometimes it's a blessing but I've got a feeling that the Oh, I have returned. And the last time it was just over, it was just under four years ago, and I suffered with it for about suffered with it for about four or five years. And I think the reason why I suffered with it, is I used to work for Royal Mail in the sorting office now the department where I worked consisted of emptying bags I was manager of a section where I was emptying bags and all things that couldn't go through the machines but we had to it was quite it was thick mail and it was all postal printed impressions um, as you can imagine these bags are a hessian bag I like a, I like a hessian bag um, and you can just imagine that there's dust mites, uh, dust air dragged along the floor, dragged through mud, everything. So it was, some of the bags were filthy, absolutely disgusting. And I've got a feeling that these, this is a contributing factor to that. I've suffered with it for, for years. So, eventually, I decided to go to my doctor's and see what was what. And the doctor gave me nasal sprays. Now, some of these nasal sprays 
gave me headaches and I couldn't use them. It really did make me suffer. It was like having a migraine. Now, I sound like I'm constantly bonged up. So, I, and it causes sneezing fits. Now, on a normal day, I can sneeze between 50 and 100 times a day. But when I do have a sneezing fit, it can go on for like 20 sneezes. And it makes my eyes runny and everything. It's like where my eyes are, it's like I've got air fever. And I don't suffer with air fever. Now I've got a feeling that these polyps have now returned again because I'm suffering all the same symptoms. So I've had to put myself in to see the GP, the doctor. So the last time it happened, it took approximately 18 months for an operation because I was booked in for operations and then it was cancelled and then booked in again and it was cancelled. And the last time I went in, I told to be there for 7am in the morning, so I was there for 7am. I told to take an overnight bag, because if my operation was in the afternoon, after 12 o'clock, then I would be having an overnight stay in hospital. Uh, <sighs> told to starve myself, not to have anything to eat, only drink water, which I did for 24 hours before I was for the operation. And it started getting closer to midday. I'd already made my order for my lunch. And they came and took me down at quarter to twelve. Well, that was stay in hospital, not happening. So I'd gone the previous 24 hours without having anything to eat. Um, when I came back up onto the ward during my operation, and I finally came round, it was like six o'clock in the evening. Now I had to resist the urge to sneeze, anything like that. Um, and it already been and served tea at tea time. And I was told not to eat anything for another. 24 hours after that, so that would have been almost three days with no food. But when I told them that I had nothing to eat all day and nothing to eat, that day at all, they came up with two stale slices of the toast and a cup of tea. I didn't get released from oh. hospital until half past nine at night. And then, because the missus doesn't drive, we had to get a friend to come and pick me up.
Get a friend to come and pick me up. So I didn't get home till half past ten. You're gonna go, aren't you? You're gonna end up going. Um, but I was, even though I'd been asleep, I was absolutely cream crackered. I was absolutely knackered. But the good thing about it was, I could smell. <sighs> and the first thing that I smelt was a cup of coffee what my missus made me. And it was it were great, and that lasted for a few months. But I, I thought, yeah, great stuff. Everything's back to normal. Smell normally. But now, gradually, as time's gone on again, its sense of smell's gone again, and I can't. I'm suffering with all the same symptoms. But I've got a feeling that another trip to the hospital is in in the pipeline. Which I'm not looking forward to because I don't I don't like going to the doctors, I don't like going to the hospital at the best of times. <sighs> but if I've got to, I've got to. And needs be. Need to find somewhere to park up because I'm not. My driver's tired. Didn't look at. You can't fault the NHS system in the UK. Uh, the job some of these doctors and nurses do, and the pressure that they're under, just outstanding. I know people have the, I know they have the knockers, and you know people have bad experiences. Uh, it just it can't be beaten you'll never get anywhere else like it in the world uh, when my when my mum died almost four years ago uh, the care and sympathy we got off them was you no know, it was out of this world even the ambulance crew that came to take my mum's hospital she was alive before we got into the ambulance He suffered a ruptured aorta. Which was instant death. And that happened whilst while she was travelling from the bungalow where she lived. to the ambulance um, because I was going to follow them up in my car and the ambulance didn't move well, I knew there was something wrong and even if they could have revived her it would have been my decision You're not gonna go, I'm gonna go. Bye.
it would have been my decision. Uh, but things happen like this. <sighs> I'm breaking at the time, but. He may be gone, but a memory still lives on. I definitely need to find somewhere to sleep. Need to find somewhere to rest. <sighs> well, that is the reason why I sound bunged up. enough of my whining and whinging about my my problems uh, if you've not already done so and you like what you're saying hit that subscribe notification hit the bell notification for any further content and give my little channel a thumbs up it helps me out, it makes it more open to other viewers that like seeing this sort of stuff. Whereabouts is this sleeping? There we go. Right, we're just going to go and park up now and go and get some rest. And break on, indicator off, lights off, engine off, sleepy time. Now we've had our rest, uh, all nice and refreshed, there's enough fuel to get me to the to where we're going, uh, the engine. Lights on and break off. There wasn't, there's no. You lost part. Letting me out. He is. Not. I'm going to have to 
my way out. Tom, come on. We're in the brown car. Double trailer must be full of Pepsi Max. Where are you all now? Waffling on for that, that long, it's just made me realise that we're only 150 miles away. Now we're going to get stuck behind this Pepsi Max truck. doing 25 miles an hour like he's doing a bit more Turn coming up just over this bridge. Right, if we don't, we'll be going straight on. Be called into the way bridge. Thank you, mate. No option. Thanks mate. See you next time. Got me no favours. Be impounded.
Cheers, mate. Go on. Thank him. Got top ground there. I'm not one of these people that goes into all the aspects of the truck and everything. All I know is I'm driving a Kenworth. Whereas you'll get all you'll get other YouTubers, and that if they want to do that, that's up to them. And they'll give you all the specs of the truck, what the torque power is, what the gearing is. That's up to them. That's that's the bag. Then not letting them have that. All I'm interested in is getting from A to B. Learning on the job. The touch what it weren't as bad as it was last time. If you watched the last video, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a couple of bumps not going to give anything away let's just say that my truck insurance had to pay out on more than one occasion but I don't use a steering wheel, I use a joystick I have it all configured my joystick. And sometimes the joystick is not as responsive as a steering wheel. Or you see jerky movements on the steering wheel, it's because I'm just slightly tugging my joystick to one side or the other side. That's how I. That's how I play my games. The joystick. When I was younger, when I was a boy, that's all I had a joystick. That's all we ever had. I started my gaming back in 1980. Or I think it was and my first ever computer was an Amstrad just seen a flying car there it was an Amstrad CPC 464 with tape deck added on and I thought I was the bee's knees, I had a green screen and I thought it was the bee's knees, I thought it was brilliant, I thought nothing gets better. And it was just all stick men. Uh, my first ever game I played on it was 3D boxing. I used to, because I was only a child, games were ranged in price from 99 pence to a tenner. A tenner back in 1984 it was like your £40, £50 games now. So, what I used to do 
is um, used to be on a Saturday afternoon. I used to be a program seller for Bolt Wanderers. It was about 13, 14. And I used to get 10% of what the program in commission. Well, for every program I sold, I got, they were 60 pence at this time. I got 6 pence program. But if I sold 100 programs, I got £6. If I sold 200 programs, I got £12. And then I got free entry into the match. So that was like another. Oh, it, was, it was quite a decent wage, ten percent. Now the spot where I used to I used to have was an extremely busy spot. I used to take five hundred programs out, and I'd sell ninety percent of them. But then, what I'd do with the rest of them? <coughs> excuse me, is where we used to play which was Burnham Park we used to have um, a track around the outside like a gravel track and I'd walk round until half time to try and sell the rest of them so I could make on a good day I could make 30 quid now, Back in them days, 30 quid. Like, it's a good whack of money. Especially to somebody who's 14 year old. Oh. You look like I'm here, we're only 50 miles away. Um, so, it's a good whack of money. And that's. How I used to buy my games. Because I'd leave the match at 20 to 5, try and get to the shops before they short at 5, and get the game I wanted. Oh, that was my the start of my gaming experience and I've had various other consoles and computers and next gen machines and I've got I've got favourite games which I'll never ever get the game likes of again But now they started fetching um, the mini, mini machines, the pre-ordered games, like the the Commodore 64, the mini uh, Spectrum 48K. That was one computer I never had. Spectrum 48K just didn't appeal to me. But then when they brought the Spectrum 1 to 8K out and they added drive I still never had a Spectrum, I still didn't bother but now in, in my house we've got Three Xbox Ones. Uh, we've got Xbox 360s that are packed away. All the games are still. We've still got all the games for them. Um, we're gonna we're gonna leave them because the they're, they're gonna be historical machines sooner or later. I don't want to get rid of them, is it? 
once I get bored with something I'll start I'll go on another machine and start doing something else when I've with the Xbox 360 I was big into Formula 1's Formula 1 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14, 15 and then in 16, 17 and 18 I went on to the Xbox One but I lost interest in it and I know there's a few on YouTube I have um, Met Mad UK and um, people like that, they make a good, they do do good videos. On Formula One, and they, they built a career out of it. And yeah, they do get invited to places, they do get invited to races and, you know, to openings and launchings of new games and everything like that. And good luck to them guys for doing that. But it's the same again, it's fits and starts. I'll end up going on it for one race weekend and then I'll put it away for another three months. Whereas when it, when it first came out, it was the full race weekend, everything, the full qualifying, full, full practice sessions, the full race, 100% races. But I just, I just have bits and starts. Um, only four miles away, so we're gonna be due. We're in Kerry's bad now. Gonna be making a left turn shortly. Need wait. Are you gonna let me in? Are you gonna just be up there? Thank you very much. on about the gaming in another video um, and other consoles that I've owned and other computers that I've had you to come into so we're dropping this cement off I didn't expect anybody coming up there.
Well, once again, I didn't think we were going to be parking up at night, but we are. Uh, where do you want it, Bob? Let's, uh, yeah, let's Maybe look here and we may get the fun bit on this. Better up that. There we are. There we go, straight in, no problems. Good drive there, no bumps, no scrapes, no nothing. Uh, we're currently on 26,600 experience points, so we're not too far off our next level. We got the full 12,000 Four hundred and three pounds, three dollars. So we're currently at one hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars now. We're only about seventeen thousand dollars off um, expanding our depot. And once we've expanded our depot, we can make more money, do a few more jobs, get another truck, and hire a driver. On that bombshell, I'll bid you goodbye. Don't forget, if you like what you see, you made it this far in the video, hit that subscribe notification, hit the bell notification for any further content, for any future content, and hit that like, so hit that like button, the big thumbs up. It helps this little channel of mine out. And with that, I'll bid you goodbye and farewell. Happy trucking.